Welcome back to the Real Estate of Mind show. We're your hosts, Glenn and Amber Schwarm. Hello, everybody. Where we help everyday people create wealth through real estate investing. That's our mission. That's our model. That's what we do every single day because we were average people that were able to create wealth through real estate investing. And so we had a topic we want to talk to you today about, and it's how to fight fair with your spouse and or business partner. Because believe it or not, probably hard to believe that sometimes Amber and I fight. Can you believe that? No, two type A's. No, yeah. <laughs> Never. And so that, I think that, that can happen a lot because you're in a marriage, you know, in our case, you're in a marriage or you're in a, a close relationship and um, there are a lot of things that can cross over, right? In your personal life, things can cross over into your business life. And um, there are a lot of decisions made a lot of time. And let's face it, when you're first starting out as a real estate investor or in business, wh whatever you do for a living, but if you're in business together with your spouse, you're dealing with money. Right. Usually large chunks of money. Yeah, big money. And, yeah. And usually it's life changing money. And not just that, it's it's potentially life changing money. And you're also risking a lot of money. Right. right? So the 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 tensions are high any given day. Would you say that's probably true? Right. Absolutely. So well, you're a bundle of words today. So far you said four <laughs> words. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> maybe. Great. All right, sir. Please. Thanks for participating, honey. Thanks for showing up today. We're going to have a fight right here live with you today, I think. So here we go. <laughs> so take our separate corners. But anyway, so we, we definitely have had our share of, of disagreements. And people always say, how do you guys work it out? I say, it's amazing what $25,000 in four years of therapy can do for you. Because we that's true. That's a true statement. We actually had to go to therapy a while back. And that worked wonders for us. So if you've gotten that far down the road consider it right yeah, and do you want to be right or do you want to stay married <laughs> yeah that's a that's a great point do you want to be right or do you want to be happy right yeah right. that's yeah how true is that yeah, so sometimes it's not about being right or wrong it's just about differences of opinion and mature adults can agree to disagree you, you know sometimes we get so stuck in our own you know fighting for our own agenda or fighting for what we think is right and we just we think the other person has to agree with us and they don't. It's okay if you're, you know, as long as you're like core values and you're, uh, you know, what you want out of life and what you believe in, as long as those coincide within a couple, you don't have to agree on every single little thing. All right, but let's, let's you have to let, be let, on the same page all the time. But let's be honest. So when you say mature adults can agree to disagree and stuff, you know, all oh, that would be ideal. But I don't know about you as our listeners, but there are times when I am not a mature adult. <laughs> Frankly, I'm like a seven-year-old sometimes. I just, I revert back to the, oh, oh, <laughs> like you're so perfect. I don't even want to hear it. So yeah, yeah. Like she's so mature all the time. How many stories should I dish out today? Just wondering uh -huh. how we should do that. So, you know, when you're married to a woman that's got seven different personalities, I stay very busy. So it's very, <laughs> I'm getting a dirty look. If you're just listening on audio, it's a uh -huh. dirty look right now. So I think one of the first things we want to talk about is... <laughs> Uh -oh. oh, he's going to pay that, pay back his hell, baby. I'm in deep <laughs> trouble right now. So, um, it's okay. Like my dad used to say, I've been here before, <laughs> so I can get out of this. I can navigate through these uncharted waters. So, number one, don't take things personal, right? Don't take things personal. That was a really big one for me because growing up, I always took things personal and I kind of wore my heart on my sleeve and I would get my feelings for it very easily. And I think through therapy, I, I really learned that and, um, I've gotten much, I've grown a lot in that area and I've gotten much better at it. And I think when you, when you are able to do that, um, when you start practicing, you know, it does take practice. It's not like it happens overnight, but when you start adopting that viewpoint and not taking things personal, it, it just, it changes a lot of things and it, it, and it makes you understand that this maybe isn't even your issue. It's not about you. Maybe it's about something the other person has going on in their life yeah. or whatever they have going on at the moment. And it's kind of like seeing the forest to the trees. You know, you can you can navigate around that more easily when you're not taking things so personal. Well, I think too, you're, we all come from a different place, right? We all come, we all, when we get into an argument, we've all got different a different perspective of it. We all have a different perspective and it brings back things from a different argument we had before, or it brings back things that- Even from a pre previous relationship. Yeah, pre yeah. or yeah, or something you grew up with or right. something that triggers you and that kind of thing. And so you might get triggered and get off and get mad and get angry and that, that escalates a fight. Now in a business relationship, relationship where you're a business partnership and a marriage or a relationship or even just a regular business partnership, if, if those things come in and you start taking things personal, you'll start fighting. Anybody, most people, and everyone has a different level of threshold of when they snap, right? So I have a very low or very high threshold. I'm very mature most of the time, or maybe not so much. <laughs> so I, but we've all got that different level and we will, we'll, we'll 
somebody will push us to the point where we start to find it. But if we, the more we take things personal, the faster we'll reach that level, right? Yes. The faster we'll explode. And the closer you are to someone, whether that be a business partner or a spouse or a child, you know, sure, they, it, could be, it could be an adult child that you're right. working with. Yeah. They know how to push your buttons. <laughs> and, they do. and if you're, you know, if they're fighting for their own agenda and to get their point across, they're going to do everything they can to push your buttons. So God forbid it's a parent that raised you. They actually put the buttons in. <laughs> so they, they installed the buttons. They know how to push those buttons all the time. Right. So you got to make sure you don't take things personal on the job. And so when you're, you know, you're flipping a house or whatever business, but that's our world is flipping houses. We can get into an argument about some, a, a disagreement about the placement of a light switch. I mean, it could be something as simple as that. Or it could be about, do we take a wall down? Or a lot of times we'll get into a bickering match at a house. This, this has happened quite a few times. We'll get into a house and we're having a discussion. And I've got this, this expectation in my mind of a budget. And I go in and go, good, we just paint this up. We'll fix this, put a new countertop, we'll clean it up. And Amber's like, no, we'll take this wall down here. We'll reopen that. We'll add a porch. Let's add an in-ground pool. Let's add it. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? She's exaggerating. She doesn't say that. But, but a lot of times she'll say walls. And I... I will physically get a reaction. I'll start getting angry. And that's just me taking it personal. Cause I'll start getting angry going, are you out of your friggin' mind? I go, what are you, do you want to make money in this business or not? And so, cause sometimes as a designer, she might go nuts on a project where I don't want to, I just want to make the money and get out. And I want to make it look nice, clean it up, make it safe and get out of Dodge. And that doesn't, so sometimes we get into it at right at the site. We'll kind of yeah. go with each other a little bit. Cause, because, because I, at that point, and making it personal. I'm making it like, I want to make money. Why don't you see my way? Why don't you see what I see? And, and I get angry about and it. And to you, it's all about the numbers. But for me, it's all about the house selling and record time too, because we need to get in and out of that house. And if you don't make the house appealing, then it can't sell. So see what happened there? We both had our own agendas. Right. You're fighting for the numbers and you know trying to stay in this budget. And I'm fighting for, yeah, but I, in that budget, I can't make the house sellable. Yeah. So we're, we're fighting for our own reasons there so yeah. uh, but then there's other times like <clears throat> for example that house we went to a couple weeks ago we did a facebook live on it um uh, we we went in this house i was i was pissed at that one i wanted because, to buy that house so, so damn bad so here's the deal though well, was, is we good. we have investor money that um we want to get reinvested or because if it sits there you know investors could could yank their money and so Glenn really wanted to buy this house as a, an airbnb a new airbnb for us and well let, let's just it's it's literally three blocks from our office. It's in our wheelhouse. And we were there the day it hit the market. So things were lined up. It was a, it was not bank owned. It was an estate. It was vacant, ugly, but not horrible till we got there. But now I'll let Amber take and, that over. And the rooms were like Cracker Jack boxes. They like were. For, for an Airbnb, like, I, need to fit, I need to be able to fit a queen size bed in there. So he's getting pissed that I'm like vetoing this project. And I'm like, you know, if you want to flip it, I can get on board with that, but I won't take it. I won't agree to taking it on as an Airbnb because that's our son, you know, me and my son run that. So I, I kind of have power there. <laughs> so you, do. you were getting upset about that where if I had taken that personal and really dug my heels in and gotten upset about it, then it would have caused a big fight. But I realized at that time that, you know what, Glenn is just wanting to get that investor money. And I realize how important that is to him. So if you can look around the problem at what the real root of the issue is, then I think that that solves a lot of problem. To me, it's kind of like the same analogy of, um, you know, when you take, when you take medicine for something, really to me, that's like putting a bandaid on the problem where you really need to get to the root of the problem at what's going on internally in your body to fix it from the inside out. It's the same thing when you're having an argument is just try to see the other person's perspective. It may not be what's on the surface of their anger and anger, by the way, is always covering another emotion. And that emotion Are we might going be, to a therapy session right now? Is that what we're doing? Maybe. Apparently. So it, you know, it might be fear. It might be embarrassment. It might be hurt. So anger is always covering another emotion. And that kind of brings us to our next point is that... Um, you don't want to you don't want to mix personal and business. That, the last point really was don't take things personal. And this is don't mix personal and business, right? right? So now you've had a fight and then you go home in the same car together, right? And that's where it starts to become dicey. Let's just say that, right? It can be very dicey. Now you're in a car. If you're if you're married in any length of time, you're smiling right now because you know this conversation. You get in the car. Is everything okay? Fine. I'm fine. Oh, shit. She's fine. That's great, right? That's not a good place to be. But then what happens is 
that carries on until you get home. Sometimes we've ridden the whole ride home and not said a word to each other, just pissed, just angry, kind of dug into our own corners because we took things personal or I took things personal. It's never Amber, of course, but we took things personal. Well, I'm much more mature. Oh, you are much more mature. Just ask you. <laughs> so yeah, that's important. So if you don't take things personal, um, or if you if you take things personal, you know, kind of leave your work, leave your, leave it at the office, so to speak. Your office might be a job site, right? You might actually work from home, but you may have an office that uh, that that's kind of your office. And you want to leave those emotions, those fights there, because if you bring them home, guess what happens to your entire evening. It's shot. And your family dynamic and around yes. your kids and everything. And, you know, I just want to like add to this. Good luck with that because it's hard to not bring it home if you're disagreeing about something at work. So it takes well, a lot of practice. If you're a mature adult, I can do that. Right. I know you struggle uh -huh. with it. So, but, but we have said, you know what, let's table this for right now. Yes. And, you know, then after everybody like calms down and takes a breath and tries to see it from the, you know, even, even during that kind of calm down time when you're tabling it and, you know, come back the next day and rediscuss it. That's kind of a good way to put it though, is to table it. Yeah. We've, we've definitely done that before many times. Um, and then, you know, after but when you, you say table, you have to actually table it. Now I'm a picker. Yeah. I'm a picker. I, it's, and I just, when I want to get my board across, I just, I'll dig in hard. And so even though we say let's table it, you can't make little comments later. Yeah. Glenn, Ask me how I know that. And Glenn's like the salesman that um, you will finally buy whatever he's selling because he just <laughs> won't leave. So, so, you know, when he wants to get his point across, it's like he will come at you from every single angle possible I'm trying. to mankind. I'm trying. <laughs> and, you know, it's like no matter how many different ways you ask me the question or try to prove your point, the answer is still no. <laughs> and if you bring it, but when I bring that home, it's always a loss for me. And it's not just a loss for me, right? It's a loss for our relationships, the loss for our kids seeing us, whether we're, whether we're fighting, you know, not, that, not like we're, you know, duking it out, but if you're bickering and fighting, your kids see that, right? Your family sees that. Even if you don't have kids, maybe your dogs or cats see it. I don't know what's in your house, but, but it's a loss of time. It's you know? a loss of time. Yeah. Loss of quality time with your, with your mate, with your spouse, of with your, your life. partner. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I think it's important that you just remember, try your best to leave it at the office. You know, don't take it personal, but, but, but leave, leave personal, personal business. But now the same thing holds true if you're fighting about something personally. So if you have a personal fight over whatever, whatever you're, you know, married couples, we all know we've got big things we bicker over because we spend a lot of time together. And Amber and I are together pretty much all day, every day, right? That's pretty much, you know, a lot. And sometimes those things can go to work. So you may be bickering about the kids. And we've had this happen. Like lately, Last week it happened. It did. So Last they, week it happened where we had an argument um, at home. And about we, the kids and all that. We both came to work the next day. You went in your office and I went mine, but we had a podcast. We were a guest on a uh, podcast that, that same yeah, day. Yeah. So I'm like, you know, I'm texting him. What do you want to do with the podcast? And he's like, well, I'll be professional and you will. <laughs> now, wait, I like how I text a word and she she puts a voice behind it. I'll be professional if you will. You got to like that, right? That's nice how she, she it puts my tone on there. Which probably was, she's probably correct. So <laughs> when you know each other after a while, you know what the tone is, right? Yeah, we were arguing about, I was, I was a less than stellar parent. So dad's out there, if you're listening to this right now. You know, it was a dad fail moment for me. It was not a good moment for me. Not proud. I, God knows I try my best to be a great dad, but man, I dropped the ball every now and again. And so I kind of lost my temper a little bit and whatever with the kids. And so I had, I had to leave to get, get, take a pause for myself. And the next day we were, Amber and I were still, you know, at it. Yeah, we had to, we, what I did was I, I broke my own cardinal rules. I brought the personal to work, right? The personal fight crossed over to work. So not, so sometimes the business fight crosses over to your personal life at home, but then your personal fights, which may have nothing to do with work, suddenly come into work. And then all of a sudden every argument at work becomes all about, you're still, you, you're still trying to fight the, the fight for personal. You say, well, how, what do you want to do with that house? Do you want to flip that or Airbnb? Well, I don't know. All of a sudden you're fighting about a, a business deal that you'd normally never fight over, but you've, you've mixed in the personal, right? You've mixed personal and business together. And so you got to make sure that you keep that separate, right? That's actually a really good point too. That, well, was, that, was, that was something that we learned in therapy is if you are disagreeing about something or fighting about something, keep it to that. You know, don't bring in all the other garbage of every fight you've ever had your whole life together. You yeah. know, keep it, keep it on point. Keep it on, on target. Yeah. If you, if you're fighting, you start saying, mm -hmm. well, remember, well, you did this, well, you did this, well, you did that. If you start going backwards and pulling garbage out of the past, you keep pulling that back out. That's a fight. You're just not going to win, right? That's you're, you're all going to lose that. So, you know, the, the topic of today is how to fight fair with your spouse, because let's be honest, you're going to fight. And if you say, well, we always get along, well, then you're, newly, you're newlyweds. So give yourself time because eventually you're going to have a disagreement. And it's important to know how to navigate those disagreements so it doesn't impact 
your family life. And some disagreements can be really healthy. They can lead to growth. Very true. A lot of them have for us, but but if you if you can't get through them to see the other side and you hang on to things, eh, that's just that's not gonna make anybody grow. So that's that's important. Now, this leads us to our next point is in an argument, when you are battling with your spouse, whether it's personal or it's business, and this is really for people that are working together as a couple, um, the one who is angry, the one who's losing their temper, speaking loudly or out of control, that's the one losing the fight. So keep that in mind. When next time you're fighting with your spouse, look at the one who's calm. Because the one who's, and if you're, if you're both losing your mind, then you're both losing the fight, right? It's just a bad situation. But if you look at any argument, think about it for a minute. The one who's losing their mind, they're losing their shit, they're like, ah, ah, they're screaming, you know, whatever. At that moment, they are losing the battle. That's why they're losing their mind. That's why they can't stay calm because they're losing it and their brain resorts back to this primal you know, instinct to just fight, like to start to get aggressive with your words or whatever it might be. That's the person losing their cool because they don't have the mental tools to win the argument anymore. They're losing the argument, so they start to fight about it. So next time you're in, an, in that situation, remember that if you're losing your cool, you're also losing the fight. Now that, that holds true. I'm talking like, just feel free to jump in whenever you want to. So that, that holds true in your relationship with contractors and business people you do business with right now. This is a relationship. This is about, um, this is about um, you're getting along with your spouse, but the truth is you can have a fight with a contractor on the job or a fight with a supplier, vendor, uh, employee, whatever. You can have a fight with somebody and that fight can then translate when you come home, right? You can come home and all of a sudden be fighting with your spouse and don't even know why because you're pissed off at another fight. So if you learn how to control your anger and control the fights, and remember the one who's losing their mind and the one who's out of control is losing, and if you're like me and don't like to lose, you'll do better at staying cool, taking it down about 10 notches, and just staying cool and try and talk yourself through it, and that'll help your relationship Yeah, and, too. and the best thing, I, th I think this is a really, really valuable point, like this whole, this whole segment right here that you were just talking about. And sometimes you're both gonna be out of control. You know, sometimes both of you are going to be angry and, you know, in that case, it's best to just take a pause and take a break from each other, take a time out, whatever you have to do, go in separate rooms, go take a drive, go take a walk, whatever, because you're not going to reason with somebody when they're angry. You're never, never. going to win an argument when somebody is angry. You're, you're not the winner if you win. Even if you win, you're not the winner of an argument. Right. Yeah, you think you win the argument, but you don't win. No. You lose. So, so you're much better off to take a pause, take a break, calm yourself down, you know, come back to your adult reasoning kind of mind you know frame of mind you know because because you don't want that to come in between you yeah you 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 know we have we have four kids right so you we we it's always important to say step away take a breath so many times as parents we give our kids that advice we don't take it for ourselves we forget that we are just kids on the inside that just have old bodies right i don't know about you yeah. i feel like i feel like i'm 18 half the time inside till i my old body, you know, kinks up a little bit. And I realize that I'm 51 or 52, but it's, um, uh, I guess I get, well. Well, so, so one thing that I think is a really good um, kind of like visual is, you know, we've all seen kids have temper tantrums on the floor. You know, even they're, they're on the ground, stomping their feet, flailing their arms, crying, whatever. That's all we're doing when we get mad and right. try to, yeah, true. we're, we're, we're yeah. throwing an adult temper tantrum yeah. when we get like that. Sometimes so. you're on the floor crying. Sometimes it gets bad. It just depends. Yeah. <laughs> so, but if you can like visualize yourself doing that and you're like, all right, I need to, you know, that, that's like a good way to realize what's going on in your head at the moment and with your emotions and, and realizing that you're out of control and, you know, telling yourself, all right. Let me calm down. Let me take, you know, let me go in the other room and take 10 deep breaths, whatever you have to do to calm down. Cause who wants to like see themselves throwing an adult temper tantrum? Time is your friend. You know, when it comes to, when it comes to managing fights and fighting fair, time is your friend almost always. And sometimes, you know, I'll speak for myself. I can be so angry that I'm just, blah, I'm done. I'm so sick of her blah, blah, and get angry. And you think all these bad thoughts. I know she never thinks, thinks that about me ever. Never. Mm -mm. She's so full of crap. So, but I, I know that happens because we, we also share the same brain a lot. So when one of us is feeling the one way, the other one's probably feeling the same way. But I also know that in time, I'm going to remember that she's my best friend, that she is my soulmate, that she is my business partner, that she is on this journey with me. She's my co-captain and that we're, we're building this empire together. But at the moment, I don't remember that because I just want to win my argument. 
And so if you're arguing, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Sometimes you're fighting so hard to fight the fight to win the fight that you're forgetting there's a much bigger play going on. And that's your, your relationship and your life, your life agreement. So, or your life um, uh, is being played out. You're, you're, that's what you're doing. You're building your life together. So you can decide if you want to be great or not. So remember, this is one of those tips that if you find that you are out of control in the argument, that you are the one losing the argument. So if you remember that and you're competitive, it can help you when you feel yourself escalating like Amber, picture yourself laying on the floor and just throwing your hands and feet around because that's what you're actually doing when you're losing your mind. And if you bring it back down, the other person has a good chance. The other person might realize, hey, wait a minute, he's calm. I better knock it off because I'm losing. And then all of a sudden they calm down and you'll be- You're de-escalating you the situation. You can de-escalate. This is exactly what I was going to say, but you stole it from me like usual. So you can de-escalate the situation right there. I know I talked a little bit, so. All right. So next, this was Amber's. Yeah, I think you should, um, everybody should be open to being wrong. And that's- I'd what, like you to say that again, honey. That's that's. Awkward. I want to hear you say it again, just because I think it's important that you <laughs> say it again. <clears throat> say it again. That's a hard pill to swallow, <laughs> isn't it? I mean, it tastes like vinegar, right? <laughs> so, but if you can be open to being wrong, so that fight that Glenn and I had last week, my reaction to his um, losing his temper was not the best, but- I reacted like very knee jerk. And so the next day he was angry at me for my reaction to him. And yeah, it, what caused we, us, it caused a chain reaction. Right. And yeah. so what we, when he said, do you think that's the best way to handle it? I actually sat back and thought, okay, that probably wasn't the best way to handle it. I, you know, in my, in my short term vision, what I did is what I thought I had to do, but like in the long term scheme of things, no, that probably wasn't the best way to handle it. And I wish I had had a different tool in my tool bag to do things differently. So I was, I was open to being wrong at that moment. And I think it's so important to try to see the other person's perspective when you were in an argument and that'll solve a lot of problems. And also if you're finding yourself getting angry on a regular basis and it's like uncontrollable and you guys are fighting a lot, don't underestimate the power of getting help for it either. Or, al or alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> a good glass of wine or Four would be good too. That sort of helps loosen things up a little bit too, but not, no, no, not but, advocating alcoholism. I'm just saying, you know. I mean, in all seriousness, there are nights where, you know, one yeah. of us is stressed out and the other one isn't or whatever. And like, we're like, we're like bring the other one a drink on the couch. Yeah. Like, I'll, I'll walk in here, Amber, I'll, I'll amp up because the kids are going crazy. Our house is nuts a lot of times. The nanny's there and the dog wants to get in. The cats are there. The cats bought a, brought a dead rat in or a dead mouse in or chipmunk. Or, <laughs> That's now headless. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we have a, yeah. We have headless chipmunks a lot in our house, but I'll walk in. It's like a, it's a stress ball and i'll walk up to amber and go can i get you a glass of wine honey <laughs> no Shut sometimes up. he doesn't even ask me sometimes yeah. he just brings it sometimes to i pour it and go here you go <laughs> uh, uh, no no just have here put a big nipple drink on. faster put a big bottle on nipple thing just just drink that down would you honey so it's uh it's yeah it's important i think to to understand that you can be wrong and when you're a person that likes to win fights you don't like to be wrong you know no none of us like to be wrong Amber said none of us like to be wrong but a lot of times we are and it may not be it may not be that our idea is wrong, but we may have reacted wrong, right? Our reaction our reaction didn't really exemplify what we were really feeling, because we're so angry and so amped up, and we wanted to do that that we we don't think we're wrong. And sometimes, have you ever been in a fight with your spouse or your business partner? But you're which you know in this case one and the same. You ever been in a fight with them and you don't even remember what the hell you're fighting at after a while? Now, if you're married, I, if you've been married for more than a year, I know you've had that where you're fighting with somebody. And after a while, you're like, I don't even know what we're fighting over. I don't yeah. even remember what the fight started over because it's escalated. And it's grown from thing to thing to thing to thing. And it's like, oh my God, enough's enough already, right? Yeah. And that kind of brings me to another thought is um, get good at moving on. Could don't you, don't let you, those. Could you say that one again? I. I actually just elbowed him for those of you listening. So <clears throat> that was something I struggled with. I'm, you know, to be totally transparent, I really struggled with that. And, you know, that came from some of my head trash from my childhood <laughs> and everything else. But again, if you can have the fight, get over it, move on, don't bring that up in future fights, just let it be. So, and, and the thing with Glenn is sometimes he'll, if it's the case where he was wrong, he'll apologize 17 times. And <laughs> like well, making my point. But but it but it it continues. Wait, now I'm gonna be told I'm wrong for apologizing. I, I can't wait to hear the rest of this sentence. So please continue. But no, and I'll, it continues the it, it 
prevents us from moving on to the next step when you keep bringing it up. So, you know, if you can, you know, say you're sorry. Or, or when and you bring up it. an argument from three years ago, or that, that may help us from prevent us so from going if, on you know, <laughs> Say you're sorry if you need to say you're sorry and mean it. But then both of you say, all right, let, that's in the past now. Let's move on from here into the future. We, you know, here's what we can take from that. Here's what we learn from it. Here's what we can do better. You know, here's how you can handle me better. Here's how I can handle you better. You know, you can, you can, like, I mean, like I was saying, you can grow from that and yep. figure out the ways to deal with each other in a healthier way. So along that line, what just came to my head, which just recently we both read The Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman. Great book for it your marriage. Great really great book for your marriage and and not to go into a segment on that but it helps in your business relationship too because it it's it talks about how this is a you know very very general uh, uh generalization of it but it's uh it talks about how we have different languages that we feel loved right um there's uh i gotta think there's words there's words of affection or words, words of, of affirmation quality time um physical touch gifts, gifts. And um, I can't think of the fifth one right now, but. Me either. That's not, well, they must not be important to us. I know that. So, so like my, mine is physical touch with words of affirmation being right there behind and you can go to. Oh, acts of service. Acts of service. Right. right. Oh, yeah. that actually that's her number one. <laughs> oh, what a shithead I am. Great. So there we go. So yeah, don't take our advice. Don't listen to anything we said. I totally forgot, but. I have worked really hard on acts of service because that's how she scored is a test you take. Very simple, but it tells you what that person's ranking is for how, what their love language is. And the best, the way that it described to me is that have you ever been with your spouse, business or personal relationship, and you're talking and you're, you, you're, you think you're saying, I love you. And the person doesn't hear you. It's almost like if you went into a different country and you, you think you, if you say, well, I speak Spanish and you go to Mexico, but you speak Spanish from Spain, it's different. It's similar, but it's different. They don't really understand. They kind of understand. But they don't really understand. The dialect is so different. You ever listen to someone that's like, you know, speaking English, they're from, uh, from Ireland or Scotland. You kind of understand them, but sometimes it's tough, right? That's what it's like when you don't understand somebody else's love language. You think you're speaking it because you're saying what's important to you, but they don't really under, they're not hearing you because it's important to them. So long, long story short is that that was able to help us be able to do that. Like for me, it's physical touch, number one. And that's just not sex, guys. That's not just that. It's actually holding my hand and, and snuggle on the couch and all that, you know, give me a hug and just give me a kiss and in the in public, put your hand on my leg or whatever, or, you know, take me to the, never mind. So anyway, so whatever it might be, but, um, but it's, that's important to me. And then words of affirmation are a close second for me. So if you could do the two together while you're amazing, while, never mind. So we could do all that. That's great. But that, that's for me, but Amber is acts of service. So I make sure I acts do of service and quality time. Yeah. I make sure I do those things. Like I, I really have been making sure I, you know, guys, this is, if you're, if you're newly new in a marriage, I can tell you, I did lost my first marriage because I didn't, this was not, I didn't do these things and it was important to me, but it or important to my, my ex-wife, but you know, it's acts of service or things like the doing the dishes and helping out around the house and picking up and taking care of the lawn and picking up the kids and picking up dinner. And the little things that you don't think mean anything mean everything to a person that has that as their love language. Now, I know we're down a road here about your relationship, but this is a, this is the core of it. When you learn how to speak your mate's language, their love language, your business relationship will improve also. Do we still fight? Absolutely but now we know how to fight and we also can quickly go back to those tools. So as investors, we're always giving people tools in their tool belt. You have to have tools to know how to market. You have to have tools to know how to negotiate. You have to have tools to know how to uh, do the renovation, how to manage the contractor. You have to have tools to know how to sell that. You have to have all these tools. You have to have a home flipping evaluator, know how to price the house out. You have to have all these tools. In your relationship, if you don't have tools, you'll fight and you won't know how to fight fair. You'll have no idea how to do it because you're just bickering, you're fighting, you don't you know. So if you can read books like that and work on your relationship, that has been a kind of a game changer for us. Yeah. Exactly. You know, I've talked a lot there, but I've I read the book a couple of times and I wanted her to read it. You know, she's I think halfway through. So no, I'm just kidding. You you read it. There's one called Five, Five Love Languages for Children, also that was great. That I'm actually, in the middle of that one right now. That actually helps that helps you with your kids and stuff. So so anyway, so we got down a got a rabbit hole there, but I think it was a good rabbit hole. It was. People understand that. Healthy relationships. Healthy relationship. And and next is have a sense of humor. That's super important because. <laughs> Love of God, you got to laugh. And, and at yourself laugh. sometimes, you know, if you do something stupid and, 
or yeah. you, you know, spout off something you shouldn't have spouted off on, you know, just have a sense of humor. Yeah, just chill out. The world we live in today is so, so serious and so, so political yeah, and serious so... and uptight and shut up already. Loosen up, have some fun, laugh at stuff. There's, watch movies, laugh, you know, the, your endorphins will come out when you laugh. It's healthy to laugh. It's very good for your health, for your heart, for your sanity, everything. Watch something that makes you laugh, you know, and like you said, laughing, last day you said something on the couch. We were watching the show. I don't know what you said, but you said something. We both started cracking up. It was very funny, whatever you said. I don't, I don't remember what it was, but we were watching some show. You said something. I bust out laughing. <laughs> it, <laughs> so we're watching um, The Vow, which is about this like sex cult or something that happened right here in Albany, right where we yeah, are. Yeah. And so these girls, I, I hope I'm not, you know, like ruining anything for anybody. These girls are getting branded. And so you made a joke about we should have our our um, homeless people get branded, and our one of our um, our core values is actually an uh, what do you call acronym. it? An acronym. Live so it. Our, our yeah, it's called Live It. And I said, yeah, we could get them to put Live It right on their forehead. Yes, it's, it was a funny. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to have you do that, but I just suggest, I'm just saying it was funny at the time because it just cracked me up. So my point is we're on the couch. She said something. I bust out laughing. It's healthy to have a sense of humor in your relationship. And, you know, sometimes when you live with somebody with them all the time, not everything's funny after a while. Some other people might hear me and go, oh my gosh, that's funny. And Amber's like, it's a joke that I've heard yeah, 7,000 yeah, times. Yeah. Amber's like, I've, I'm so sick of that stupid joke. I want to, I want to stab him in the throat. But no, Glenn has a very good sense of humor. Well, I, he, he uses humor to deflect situations too, yeah. or not deflect, but um. De-escalate. De escalate. That was yeah. the word I tried to use earlier. You stole from me. So the sense of humor things I think is really important in your relationship and use it for use it in your did you just yawn? <laughs> I don't think I'm so. literally talking and you're yawning. That's really lovely. Sense of humor. Oh yeah. It's a sense of humor, yeah. <laughs> Are you done yet, loser? Because I'm really tired of your crap today. I just want to beat you with a hammer. Okay. So, anyways, that's what Amber's thinking. But anyways, have a sense of humor. That's really important in your relationship, and you'll find that it'll help you when you're having when you bicker and you can also go back to things. So our kids, we, when they're, ha our, our daughter is seven right now at the recording of this and she's uh, obsessed with Legos, obsessed with Legos, love Legos. Like she's ridiculous. Like we, have to, we have to call her away from the Lego table and say, come on, you got to spend time with the humans in the room. And so she loves them. So we made a deal. She has these meltdowns from time to time where she just loses it, right? When she gets hangry, usually. Right. Yeah. She gets that from her mother. And so we... <laughs> Never me. So... No. We, uh, all of the bad qualities are mine. All of the good qualities are his. Of course. I'm glad this is being recorded. See? And I'm glad that, again, I'm glad you admitted this is that. during the segment of using a sense of humor. <laughs> because that's not true. Anyway, so... We came up with, with this idea. We told our daughter, we said, listen, next time you're having a hissy fit, I'm going to look at you in the eyes and say, Lego. Lego. <laughs> and, and she literally starts laughing and it's worked several times. Cause she was like, I wanted, that was my toy. I said, Jesse, Jesse, Lego. <laughs> and she, she laughs, but it she's angry. Her state. But it yeah, changes her state. Yeah. yeah. She totally changes. And she's like, all right and she knows that's the deal we made our, our five-year-old son's word is poop yeah that's right yeah that's his word yeah poop <laughs> because he's five yeah of course he's still and that's all funny yeah i know so anyway have a sense of humor you know if you could find words in your relationship that help you crack up i mean if we were fighting and i was thinking about it i'd probably say lego or poop you know make because we'd know that's our kids that's our kids safe word to kind of de-escalate that kind of stuff and we'd probably laugh it'll probably break up a tense moment because when you are tense and fighting, you will really not accomplish much. Yeah, look having your safe word. You know? <laughs> huh? All right, just leave it alone. Don't be a weirdo. <laughs> Anyways, so so sense of humor is really important. So the last point I think that I want to make is remember that above all, your relationship is more important than money. And keep it that way. Make that a priority. You have to because when you're going for your goals and you're going for your dreams and you're working your tail off and you are going for it, you can forget about the most important relationships in your life and they can deteriorate to the point where they're, they are unfixable. I, I don't even know if it's so much forget as take for granted. Like you just take for granted that they're always going to be there sure. no matter what, because you love this person. But you know, if you, if you get so busy making a living that you forget to make a life for this person and make sure that they're the most important person in the world to you, that can slip away if you're not careful. It can. Yeah. So I think you have to remember <laughs> that it's not all about the money. So when you get, when you have a fight, this is why we want to talk today about, about fighting fair. When you have a fight with your mate, your business partner, your spouse, significant other, whatever it might be, and you also work with that person, 
it is so important to remember that that you're together because of your relationship, right? You probably didn't get together because of the business. You get together because you love each other, right? That's why you got together in the first place. But remember that and keep that at the front of your mind all the time. And if you keep that in mind, you remember during a fight, if, if you're fighting about money, you're fighting about a deal you want to buy, a contractor, you're fighting because bills are falling behind, right? That's, you know, that's always a bad time too. Money gets stressful. Uh, if you remember that no matter what, you've got your mate. Be supportive. Well, then you've got it all. You know, all the money, all the business will come and go. And I've had bad months. Certainly, that's one of my triggers, right? If we have a bad month or something happens, I, I get triggered there. If, if numbers are down, they're not where I want to be, sales are down, I get triggered. That, that, that says to be a trigger with me because I just, I like to be successful in that area. But if I bring that home and start, you know, picking fights with my family, those who are close to me, and my spouse, who's my number one relationship, all it's going to do is deteriorate that relationship, right? And I allow that to come in there. So I have to remember that money comes and money goes. Deals come, deals go. What do you have when you're in your deathbed? It's not what you build. It's not your money, all that kind of stuff. What you have is your family. And hopefully you have your spouse, right? Hopefully, you know, I mean, one of you has to go first, I guess, but hopefully that's what happens. My, my dad lost him a couple of years ago and it was tough, real, real tough time. We were all there, but my, my mom, we got to see that my dad never had a lot of money. And he's always joked about that. You know, he's better, probably the richest person I ever met. Oh, yeah. He said, my, he said, I'm a poor man. Been a poor man my whole life. I'm going to die a poor man. But he was the richest man we ever knew. Because mm-hmm. he knew, you know, he had figured out the secret to life was that your relationship is key. And he and my mom are married for 63 years. Did they fight? Oh, yeah. And sometimes they would get into it. And, um, but at the later year, because my, my, mom my mom's tough. My mom, she raised four boys. She's tough. And she'd dig her heels in. But my dad would dig his heels in, too. And they would, they, but they found a way to fight fair and to keep that relationship whole. Now they weren't in business together, but they find a way to make that work. And my point is that that relationship, that relationship that you have with your spouse really is the core of a family. When you're building a family, that's your, you're teaching your family how to have a healthy, happy, successful relationship with your mate. So if you work with them in a business, I think it's really important that you remember that you are the example for your family and you are teaching them for generations to come. You're their model, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, that the relationship's number one, business is number two. Listen, money's important. Anybody that says to you that money's not important doesn't have any, right? Or or they're whatever. Money's very important. It's up there with oxygen, they say. It really is. You have to have it to survive. And if you want to live a good life and help a lot of other people, you have to have it right? To be able to do that. And I was just thinking too, so much of this does come from our childhood. And as you're talking there about your mom and dad and everything, if we, if we are, if we do have the kind of personality that goes off and gets upset and has those adult hissy fits and temper tantrums, it's probably because that's what was modeled for us. So we have a chance right now in our own family to change that, to model something different for our kids so that they can grow up and have be even more healthy or help, not more healthy, be healthier um, adults and go into healthy relationships and have a very fulfilling life because they've been modeled that yeah. from an early age. So remember that going in. When you're, when you're in business with your spouse, you just remember that your relationship is number one. So just a quick recap, what we talked about today, hopefully you enjoyed today and um, you know how to fight fair with your business partner or your mate. Uh, this goes for all those people that are working together with their mate or you're about to work together with your mate because you're going to get into these things and go, Remember what Glenn and Amber said? We gotta be, we gotta, we can't fight. And if you really get into a bad fight with your fight and you're not sure, look at your spouse and go, Lego. <laughs> and just see if that helps, right? I don't know. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. But just to recap, uh, number one was don't take it personal, right? Don't take it personal. Two was don't mix personal and business. Leave it at the office. Leave it at the office. Three was the one who's angry is the one who's losing the argument, right? The one who's out of control. Four was be open to being wrong. And five was have a sense of humor. And six was, remember that the relationship is more important than money. So. And overall, working with your spouse is great. It um, is. But these are, these are tools that you want to put in your tool belt to know how to handle uh, disagreements that may arise. <laughs> As they're hearing this, if you just meet us for the first time, you're probably thinking, Christ, they don't get along very good at all. They just fight all the, <laughs> apparently they fight every day and they figure it out. And that's just not true. We were, right, right, right before we did this, we said to ourselves, well, we had one last week. We don't, I said, I said, well, we fight enough. We have to, we have to have stuff to pull off of for this content. She said, we don't fight that much. And then we thought about that for a minute. But then, no, we, we are very, we are two very strong personalities, right? Very strong personalities. And neither of us like to lose. We both like to win. That's that's important to us. So 
we've had to figure it out. But over time, you get better and better at it. And the fights and the bickering gets less and less and less. So, you know, as you're, as you're entering in, if you find that you're bickering a lot, you're whatever, it'll get better and you'll, you'll get better at it. And we certainly did. And now we're at a place where we can fight fair and we know how to, we know how to fight fair. And even, even if it does become a bet, and it, you know, bet fights don't happen that often, but if they do once in a while, we know now to take a pause because time will fix everything. Because we know that the most important thing in our life is each, other. is each other. So with that, we will sign off today. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed today and hope you learned something about your relationship. And hopefully, if you're in business with your spouse or your mate, you now know how to fight fair. So thank you guys for being here today on the Real Estate of Mind Show. And we'll see you at the next episode. See you next time. Make sure you like and subscribe and leave us a review. And leave us your questions and comments and we will personally answer. And please share it to anyone you think could benefit. You can find us all over social media at Glenn and Amber Schwarm. We'll see you next week.